Welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. Today we are going to be painting my new calipers red. Now, as everybody knows, red adds at least 25 to 30 horsepower per side, so that's times four. So we're hoping to see around 120 horsepower gain out of this mod. Now, luckily enough for me, even though these calipers are used, they are so new used that they are actually in great condition. In fact, I would be surprised if they had more than about 120 to 150 miles on them before taking off the vehicle to be replaced with whatever calipers the owner of the vehicle decided to do. These came off of a 2017 440, and now they're gonna be going on my 2001 330. So there's actually four ways to paint your calipers. Based on my research, the best way to do this, which would be more of like an OEM, would be to actually take them to a shop with actual automotive paint. Now the second way to do it would be to get them all torn apart, prepped again, and get them powder coated. Now the biggest downside to powder coating is you would actually have to disassemble these completely and then there might be some machining because powder coating adds a layer of thickness and it's mostly a 360 paint job and so you'll have to clean some of it out. That is another really good alternative to painting them with automotive paint. The last couple ways are more of the DIY, things that you can do at your home for around $25 to $30. So the first way to do it is to actually get some Dupacolor or VHT caliper paint, clean up the calipers, prime them, paint them, and then put your clear coat on them. That can be done for around $25 to $30. And the last way to actually paint your calipers from home is to go and get a caliper painting kit where you're actually painting them on with a paintbrush, which is the way we're gonna be doing it today. I actually have done this probably on six or seven cars, and I've had mixed experiences with it, but the only reason that we're doing it with this is because I already had this in the shop. It's actually a pretty extensive kit for $25. It comes with a can of paint, a can of brake caliper cleaner, instructions, paint brush, paint stick, and actually some masking tape. The other reason I'm doing this is because this isn't spray paint, and I don't actually have to do this outside, preferably, you would do spray painting outside um, unless you kind of had a space in your garage set up to do spray paint. And I just didn't want to get any of that done on top again, like I said, the fact that I actually already own this one. So I want to go over some of the pitfalls on this guy. If you're looking at doing this type of paint, I want to talk about this real quick before we actually start to prep these calipers and get them painted. The biggest downside to this guy is the cure time. It needs to be in a warm and dry climate. So if you're painting this, and you've got a whole bunch of humidity and it's cold, you could actually make it so that it doesn't ever cure ever. Now, one of the things that I was noticing on this when I was doing this the first couple of times was that it would kind of drip off the caliper and, and it would drip onto the inside of the wheel. Not a big deal, this stuff's pretty thick. If you lay it on really thick, then it doesn't really matter too much and then you're just cleaning the inside of your wheel. The biggest upside to this is that when it does chip and crack, just like most paints will, even getting it painted professionally, you can get chips in the paint. What's nice about this is you just pop the can open again, take a toothpick, and just patch in where it was cracking off. It's pretty rare to have large cracks in it. I've had the calipers that are on my race car painted for probably close to five years. We're gonna go look at those here in a second and talk about some of the things that I've seen on those so that we can avoid those same problems with these new ones. So here are the painted brake calipers on my race car. There's a little bit of a drip right here and a little bit of a drip right here. So this means that I painted it on here and then it was flowing down. So you kind of have to babysit these ones. I know that there are other caliper paints that actually have a hardener to them and they do better than this one. This one here, you actually kind of have to babysit and keep the paint. You kind of have to brush it back up and just make sure that it's not gonna sit there and constantly drip. So that's probably the nicest thing about painting them this way is you don't actually have to mask off anything. You can just kind of pick and choose where you wanna paint and not paint, and it doesn't really matter too much. As long as you're not getting it on the rotor or somewhere else that will make it look goofy, you're kind of just free to, to paint where you need to. The next thing I wanna talk about, and this will probably be super unpopular, but I'm really gonna paint this front side and get around the back pretty good, but I'm not gonna make sure the back of the caliper is like absolutely perfect, because it just doesn't matter. I think this caliper here, if we went around to the back side, only probably about 70% of this caliper is painted because nobody actually ever sees the back. So without further ado, let's go back over to my new calipers and we will get the prep work started. So one more thing before we start cleaning and sanding this stuff to get prepped is that I'm actually going to be taking these lines off of the caliper here. These lines are created when the caliper is being produced. And what happens is it 
makes kind of this ridge and paint has a hard time sticking to it. And so it looks really thin along these lines here. And you'll find this problem with painting them with spray paint or when you apply it with a paintbrush. The other thing that I wanna do is actually try to get these as upright as possible sitting this way so that we don't have the paint really dripping one direction or the other. It might drip off this way or run a little bit, but we'll just keep a really close eye on it and make sure it doesn't do that. And like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be doing this surface here, all of this surface here, around the back, and then it will just kind of fade off as we get to the back. All right, so here we are with the caliper all nice and clean and ready to paint. So just to recap, we went through and cleaned off all the edges with the Dremel, then we sanded them down to make sure that it would take the paint properly, and then we washed them out just to get the majority of the brake dust off. So here we are about two hours later, I've got everything coated twice. So the last thing I wanna talk about real quick before I shut everything down is do I recommend this way versus painting it if you're talking about DIY, just doing spray paint cans. I don't know how well the spray paint holds up because I've never done them. And again, this the only reason I'm doing this is because I had a can of it sitting around at the house, not because this is what I would prefer to do. What's really difficult about this is doing it this way when it's on the bench, if you want to paint one side and then flip it over, it would take so long for this to cure. I think it's like, it takes several days for this to cure, which is kind of annoying, especially if you're looking into driving your car. If it's a race car or something like that, you could probably paint it and then uh, like do it on Monday or something and then don't take the car out until the next weekend or something along those lines. But it would be very difficult for me to actually get every surface of this painted because by the time it cures, you flip it over, this could take me like two weeks to do uh, every single surface. So I got the surface that everyone will see really nice and glossy and uh, got as many drips out of the way as possible. But would I recommend doing this? No. If your calipers are off the car and they're sitting on your bench like this, I would probably spray paint them. If they're on your car, this is an excellent way to do it because you're not having to really tape anything off. You're just kind of cleaning it up and painting it with a paintbrush. And again, like I've mentioned several times, if you miss a spot or something looks weird, you can always go back in and fix it really quick. Just pop a can open, grab a 79 cent brush from Home Depot or Walmart, and you're back to repairing the little bit of paint on your brakes. So here we are 48 hours later. They are cured enough that you can actually move them around and, and hold them without uh, making a mess out of the paint. At this point, you would be safe to put stickers on them if you're gonna do any stickers. These are the rear ones, so I probably won't be doing anything to the rear calipers this time. In the next video, we are gonna be installing these. The rear calipers in this case are the exact same size, but the front are four piston, opposed to the original fronts that are on my car right now, which are a single piston. So keep an eye out for that video. I will also be doing an upgraded rotor for the front. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. I appreciate everybody for watching. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and we will see you in the next video.